All right, real quick before this video starts, make sure you follow me at 415 Kodai on Twitter and also GFX Comet. And we also got a Discord server. So uh, if you're interested, join. And I hope you enjoy this video. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to my GFX Comet tutorial on how to recreate the Royal High user interface. So I went ahead and did a few things different already in just my perspective i think they look a little bit better and it's really all subjective the only differences i made is the roundness of the circles so if you guys want to for example make it exactly like how they did in royal high all you'd really have to go to is this um the square circle and you could even turn up the radius to like 15 or oops maybe no strokes best for this huh <laughs> Uh, they have quite a big radius, so even 45 might be it. Yeah, 45 is about it. And just so everyone's on track, I guess I'm just going to have to use the 45 radius. Or you guys can really, it's really up to your own taste. I just thought at first uh, this might look a bit better. And so what I'm going to do here is just run down just the basic layout of the Royal High UI. And all they really did was just that simple squared circle or squared rectangle apologies um, with this nice little circle attached and now that we have this we can go ahead and merge these layers to oops i guess i merged the wrong layers together merge these layers nope <laughs> merge these layers together finally and we'll just get their basic shape. Um, a basic look at this shows that this is actually longer, so I'm gonna really quickly tweak this just so it doesn't look too different. And that's about the right length, so we can go ahead and do this, merge the shapes together. And we can just go ahead and start piling on exactly what they have. So first they have a nice little color overlay and they achieve this by just going on the layer style, picking up the color and bam it's very 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 straightforward not that hard and now i think the harder part for you guys hopefully you guys saw the brush highlight tutorial and this is going to be achieved by just a simple brush stroke up here and so to get that done what we can do is rasterize this layer first create a new layer on top select our brush tool over here and make sure the width the size is a bit small yes 15 is what I'm gonna go with hardness at zero and over here you just click hold enter and just drag all right real quick just to let y'all know we have a uh, completely new website as you can see here so if you hit shop we have all the categories so if you go to user interface as you can see and uh, the process now should be a lot smoother to download and uh, purchase products. You have a search bar up here and if you want to log in, sign up. But uh, yeah, with that being said, make sure to check our website at gfxcomma.com. Hope you enjoy this video. Cross. Perfect. And now this is going to give us that nice little pop effect they have up here. And matter of fact, let's just go ahead and turn the opacity for that down a bit. We don't really see any changes just yet. And so next, what they do here is they use these shapes almost to make a little under underglow, I'd say, or a shadow, just another shadow. And I really personally do think this isn't really the best choice when it comes to doing something like this. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna recreate it with a brush tool, this time a bit darker just to simplify it we can even just go the exact shade they did just because since they did this with a pen tool all they did was fill this in and turn down the opacity since it was black before and we can achieve this by just simply going here going down and then dragging our enter and draw this and then we can go ahead and I 
retrace that part and then we get to this little curve over here and to achieve this i'm just gonna go ahead and make another layer and for this they did go two different sizes and to get that we just do this and did sort of mess up here and i can fix that mistake easily just by transforming as you guys see we were able to recreate that shadow much much quicker than we would be able to with actual shapes and i think like i exaggerate in a lot of my commission videos or just my general talking videos i tell you guys speed and quality is what you're looking for so this is something i'd i'd say applies to both and what we get out of this is a similar popping effect to what they've gotten However, this side is not complete yet. So now we're just gonna stack another layer on top of this and just to do this, just to show you guys exactly how it looks. Um, this is how they've made it to be. And you could even actually just do this. Uh, just cause our, our, high, our shadows actually don't pop out that bad, we're gonna go ahead and turn them black completely. And you guys don't even need to worry about this as of now, just due to the fact that we can totally just turn down the opacity, like I said before, and everything's back to normal. So it looks a bit too loud right now. Let's rasterize these layers first. Rasterize these layers. Put all these into a single folder. And these are just gonna be highlights slash shadows. And just to narrow it even further down I'm just gonna go ahead and create this just for shadows and then that's just gonna make everything a lot more cleaner when we're working and name this group right here highlights always make sure that your guys is workspace is clean it's gonna get very very cluttered if you guys don't work on that And now what I'm doing is I'm just tweaking up these small things. Things people usually don't care much about, but to us, the people actually making the UIs, it does make a bit of a difference. And then we just add this little shadow like they have right here. Just make another layer, grab our paintbrush tool and You gotta have very steady hands to do something like this.